And let's start off with the identification features. The primus, and here the sides are in yellow, on the hull are flat and rectangular. The front side of the hull slopes downwards, and I've got that in green, and it's following the upper glacis plate. Just before the sides slope downwards, we have a rectangular engine exhaust, and that's in red. This is located on the right side, and I have that red arrow pointing to that red rectangle there, and that's the exhaust. And while we're looking at the hull here, it's worth remembering that the combat weight of this vehicle is around 28 tons, 28.3 tons, or 31.2 short tons. And the upper glacis plate, and that's yellow there, is heavily sloped. There are two access hatches, and I have those colored blue. These provide access to the engine compartment. The larger hatch is on the right side of the glacis plate, the smaller is on the left. On the top right side of the glacis plate looks to be a rectangular cover, I have that colored orange, and maybe that's possibly for an intake or filter, I'm not quite sure. In this picture we can see the travel lock, and I've got that color green, attached to the gun barrel. This will be lowered when the gun is firing. And when looking at this vehicle from the front, in case you're wondering, the width is around about 3 meters or 9 feet 10 inches. And something else to keep in mind is that when looking at this, the hull of the vehicle, if you're wondering about the length, the length is around 21 feet 8 inches or 6.6 .6 meters. The flat beam, I have that color blue, separates the upper glacis plate from the lower glacis plate, and I have the lower glacis plate color green which slopes towards the rear underside of the vehicle. The parts of that beam that appear to go over the front of the tracks is actually rubber, or are actually rubber, I should say, and I have those in those red rectangles there. We also have prominent rounded housings, and I have those colored orange, and those are for the drive sprockets. There's one on each side of the lower glacis plate on the vehicle. Notice here the rectangular headlight covers, one on each side at the front of the vehicle. In the next short video clip, we have a Primus howitzer and it's firing. You'll notice that the travel lock is stowed as the gun is in the firing position. Also, take a look at the, at the shape of the hull. So notice those flat sides and notice how the top side towards the front, and notice how it angles down along the top upper glacis plate. So the travel lock is stowed. We can also see the shape of the hull, how it angles down at the upper glacis plate. And we can also make out the exhaust port there. And the driver's position, I have it highlighted here with that yellow rectangle, is located at and on the left front of the hull, forward of the turret face. Looking at the rear of the hull, we can see it is flat and vertical. There's a hatch on each side, and you can see those there if you look at those red arrows. There's also a main rectangular access hatch, I have that outlined in yellow, in the center rear of the hull. The lower rear of the hull is angled, and I have one example of that there if you follow, that, uh, follow those green lines. And it angles towards the underside of the howitzer on either side. Primus is fitted with a 155mm main gun. The end of the barrel has a muzzle brake. I have that colored in purple. The barrel or gun tube is in blue. A fume extractor, and that is colored in orange, is located around two-thirds along the length of the barrel. The recoil mechanism, or gun mount, I have that color green, is large and box shaped. The upper half of the left side is angled along the length of the recoil mechanism. And something to keep in mind when uh, looking at this gun, this gun has a rate of fire of 3 rounds for every 20 seconds, or a maximum of 6 rounds per minute, and a sustained rate of fire of 2 rounds per minute. The length of the gun tube or barrel right now is 39 calibers and this can send rounds down range with an extended range projectile of up to 30 kilometers or 19 miles. In the following video clip we have a battery of Primus or Primus howitzers shooting in Waiudu, New Zealand and Waiudu is a New Zealand army camp and training area. In this picture here, I have these two howitzers here that we can see. I have the one on the left side, or uppermost, labeled SPG-1, and the one in the lower picture, 
in the lower corner of the picture there, or the right side of the picture, SPG2. Looking at the turret of SPG1, we can see these vehicles have a flat rectangular roof and I have a coloured dark green there on SPG1. The turret roof slopes, and you can see it sloping there, I've coloured it blue at the front to the turret face. Now the turret face there, for that look at SPG2. On the left side of the turret in front of the commander's position is a cutout, and I've coloured that orange there on SPG1 with a sight, and the sight is that little dark spot that you can see with that there and that cutout there on the face of that cutout there, that is the uh, commander's sight. This cutout has a flat face, a flat triangular shaped right side, and the flat area in front of the sight angles down to the turret face and is wedge shaped. The turret face, and here we go to SPG2, is red on either side of the gun. On either side of the flat face are angled cheeks, and those are um, light green on SPG2. And of course, as I said before, the turret face, I have those labeled red on either side of the gun. And anyway, those green cheeks, they meet with the sides of the turret. The left side of the turret is flat, and I have it colored orange. Looking at the turret from the side, we can see the cutout at the front of the turret. The cutout angles backwards when looking at it from the side. At the very rear of the turret, it looks like it may be a storage area or bustle box, and I have it colored blue. Be aware that bustle boxes, frames, nets, etc. can be removed relatively easily or replaced. I recommend trying not to use them as a primary identifying feature. Again in red is the turret face that is flat and angled forward. In green is the cheek that is angled forward and to the side slightly where it meets the main side of the turret in orange. The right side of the turret is flat and I have it color purple. The roof front of the turret slopes downward to the angled face of the turret. The face of the turret, which is in red, is flat and sloped forward. The cheek in green also slopes forward and to the side where it meets the flat vertical side of the turret and once again that's in purple. The rear of the turret, and I have a yellow arrow pointing to it, is flat and vertical. Notice the storage racks, and you can see one of those there in that red rectangle, on either side of the turret at the top. Remember, these can be simply removed. This self-propelled gun has seven sets of road wheels, and you can see them there inside that red rectangle per side. There are no return rollers. The drive sprocket, I have a green arrow pointing to one of those at the front, and we have the idler at the rear, and I have a yellow arrow pointing to that. Of course, there's a drive sprocket on each side and an idler on each side. Looking at the specifications, weight around about 28.3 tons, length 6.6 .6 meters or 21 feet 8 inches, length overall 10.21 meters or 33 feet 6 inches, width 3 meters or 9 feet 10 inches, height 3.28 uh, 3 meters or 10 foot 9 inches, crew of 4, main armament a 155 millimeter howitzer gun, with a range in excess of 20 miles and a secondary armament consisting of one 7.62mm general purpose machine gun. Of course, you could also include light weapons there, including their light weapons that the crew would carry as well. Operational range 350 kilometers or 220 miles, speed 50 k's or 31 miles an hour. The Primus or Primus is a self propelled gun developed in Singapore, known as the SSPH 1. Those initials stand for Singapore Self-Propelled Howitzer. The vehicle entered service with the Singapore military in 2002. Since then, it has performed in multiple exercises, including such places as Australia and New Zealand. While the Singapore Army did look at other options, such as the British AS-90 and Japan's Type 75, due to size restrictions, it was decided to modify the hull of the American M109 Howitzer and tailor a gun to Singapore's requirements. The turret was designed by Singapore Technologies Kinetics, or STK, which was part of United Defence, which is now part of British Aerospace, or BAE. The turret contains a locally made main gun with semi-automatic loader. The gun fires NATO 155mm ammunition, and 22 rounds may be carried in the turret for ready use. This vehicle has a four-man crew, a commander, driver, ammo loader, and charge loader. The vehicle is powered by a Detroit diesel 
550 horsepower engine. Okay, thanks all for taking the time to watch. Feel free to like, dislike, share and subscribe. Remember, in these crazy times of tech and governmental censorship and deplatforming, if an idea or voice is worthy of censorship or imprisonment, it is likely worthy of discussion. Never forget, censorship is the road to genocide.